The Maya DevBot, which has been announced I think one month ago, was still using a prototype version of the ESP32 S2 chip. We have now the production version of the chip here that allows us to play a bit with the real uh, native USB interface. The good thing of the Maya board is that we have actually two USB interfaces. One is the usual one that you have on all other ESP32 boards too, which is actually connected to our USB bridge and allows us to program the, the chip via the legacy URT uh, Rome bootloader. While the second USB interface is connected directly to the ESP32 S2 chip. It is easy to differentiate them because the USB-C connector is the UART bridge port while the micro USB is connected directly to the ESP32 S2. At the time uh, recording this video the software part that Aspersief is releasing, the ESP IDF framework, is not supporting yet the USB bootloader, but Aspersief promised in a very near future the possibility to actually uh, flash the chip directly using the native USB port, which means that you can expect to see some developer boards which are quite cheaper and smaller because they don't need this. Uh, this extra USB bridge chip anymore. The Maya dev board is therefore very uh, suitable and, and particularly good for USB development since it carries both USB ports. So I spent some time uh, to play with this uh, native USB port and um, found some interesting information. <clears throat> When you power up the chip in the normal mode, so to just give some power, and you do not pull down the GPIO 0 pin, then the chip boots as uh, usual, and the uh, uh, GPIO pins connected to USB interface are behaving uh, like any normal other GPIO pin. So they are not related to the USB interface unless you switch them on programmatically from your uh, from your program so from your from the firmware but when you power up with for example the GPIO pin uh, connected to ground so you pull down the GPIO pin the GPIO zero pin then the chip goes as usual uh, as all other EFP32 chips are doing as well into the bootloader mode, so the internal ROM bootloader mode. In this bootloader mode, the URT is allowing you to flash via the legacy method, so via the normal USB port that is connected to the uh, bridge. However, also the native USB interface gets activated, and if you connect it to a computer, you can analyze what this bootloader USB interface is actually exposing to the uh, USB host. Let's see it in action. So, I, I used Wireshark and USB Mon to actually uh, capture the USB traffic that is exchanged between the host and the uh, ESP32 S2 chip and here you can see that in the descriptor we have basically two different interfaces. The first interface is a CDC ACM interface. The CDC ACM interface is commonly used by modems and by using this interface you can have a serial port on your computer without the need to install any USB driver. The PC will assume it is a serial modem. These are all descriptors 
related to the CDC ACM and including the endpoint descriptors. And then we have the DFU descriptor at the end. The DFU interface instead is an interface that has been specified for the first time almost 20 years ago to update the firmware of USB devices. In fact, DFU is the acronym of Device Firmware Update. By looking into the DFU descriptor, I understand that this chip supports version 1.1. I leave a link to the USB DFU specification document in the, in the description below. Now, there is a little utility called DFU Util that we can use uh, to uh, play a bit with the DFU protocol. Let's try it out. Unfortunately, the DFU specification only specifies how to communicate with the device in order to download or upload a firmware. The format of the data that are going to or coming from the device is completely proprietary and specified by the device manufacturer. Given the fact that Aspersive does not support yet officially this flashing method, the only thing we can try out is to dump the firmware that is on the chip. In the DFU language, we have to use the upload functionality. I know it sounds misleading, but upload actually means from the device to the USB host, in other words, the computer, while download means from the USB host to the device. Let's try. So, we got the dump of the firmware. Apparently, by looking at the size, it seems a perfect multiple of 1024. So, I think it's a plain dump of the whole flash, which is 4 megabytes. I'm wondering how we can actually flash a new firmware without the need to program the whole flash chip. I would expect a sort of protocol where we specify location and sites and then we send the data for that location. Without any further specifications, this is only a guess or better a hope. If you think you have an idea on how it could work or how this protocol could look like, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to try it out for you. The next approach I will try is to use the CD interface and use it as a serial port. I will try to use the normal ESP uh, Python tool command, the ESP tool Python command, to flash the chip, assuming that the protocol is probably exactly the same. What is not clear uh, is how you can reset actually the chip with that interface. Maybe in Aspersive emula emulates the RTS CTS line to become a reset. I will probably record another video if the CDC USB port approach works also to show you more nice surprises hidden in this uh, new ESP32 S2 chip. Two final notes on the Maya board. It will be probably available on Amazon by end of May and a very good surprise is that there will be also a kit with an enclosure that can contain a battery. You basically solder the battery on the rear of the board, place it into the enclosure and you have a complete and independent IoT device. So that's it for the USB port. Ciao!